Well, last time we ended up uh, having wrapped with Donnell and, you know, purging the Yoblin infestation out of his warehouse. Yeah, kind of, kind of right now the, the world is your oyster. Donnell wasn't really like expecting anything further from you. He kind of rewarded you for your work done and then, um, you know, cut you loose. You um, remember you, you, you bumped into some people on your way into Donnell's. So there, there are some leads, you know, the, the sheet I gave you guys with the, you know, factions and stuff. There's definitely some stuff to check out, but um, yeah, just decide amongst yourselves, like where you guys want to go. So, and what you want to do. Vanna wants to do two things at some point, and that's figure out what was going on with that Goliath that we ran across. And, uh, and chew bubble gum. And, and chew bubble gum. And they're all out of bubble gum. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> No, what the fuck was the other thing? Oh, and uh, to speak with uh, Trevik Voxstrom, the the steward, uh, at some point because reasons. Because reasons. Because reasons. Yeah, she has not. She hasn't really. Vana hasn't really explained to anyone what like she's her her thing is that like she's doing. Before everybody else uh, chimes in, and I hope you do, uh, I did want to just like explicitly get. Um, like what your all's like living situation is. I think I have a pretty good idea what Chadeus is doing and possibly Ooh. Virginia as well. And I'm kind of assuming that Ayumi is uh, basically like hanging around the temple a lot. That's like exactly you know, right. I'm obviously comfortable sleeping outside, but you just sleep outside on nothing like this. Like, I'm trying to think of a reason that Vana would even be, like, be, I like mean, I guess, in the city. I guess, like, she would still seek out shelter where possible. Yeah, and there's certainly, like, a, you know, a lot to catch Vana's interest here. You know, it's, like, you know, pretty bustling and with the, you know, festivities coming up yeah. and stuff. But, How many days so, until those festivities after all? Uh, you know, it's it's sort of like vaguely a couple of days away. Like there's no real hard start day. Um, it's meant to kind of coincide with some harvests, but the, uh, rain. yeah, the rain and stuff. So, so to like, yeah, it's supposed to be like kind of a seasonal thing, but it's been kind of tricky lately. So people are like, you know, have been congregating for the last couple of days, like pouring in and then the festival will, you know, last, you know, as many as two weeks, it'll be around for a while. It's not like a one day kind of thing. So cool. And how about Basil? What is Basil doing? Kind of camping. He sort of like yeah. rolled back into town, you know, on this like after this chore for for the Orium family. Yeah, so I think that to your guys' knowledge, he has people he's staying with. He has people he's staying with. <laughs> Yeah, so that would require you to have friends. I don't know if I'm buying. <laughs> oh Jesus! Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think you might. You you seem like the kind of person who like ends up destroying every friendship that you. <laughs> Wait, not, you not you, Scott. <laughs> These are some fucking <laughs> You Basil. <laughs> You're a scoundrel. Chad just invite uh, Basil to stay with my parents. Ooh. We ended During last time like, by party. not really answering the question of whether we could stay at the um at, oh, the, yeah. at the at the estate in any way. Um Oh no, just Basil, because remember we had a whole dinner party where we met. <laughs> I feel um, like I I invited him without my parents' permission to live in a guest bedroom. Okay, so I feel like I'm just going to sleep outside of their estate. Like on the ground outside of Hell this. Oh yeah. Just okay. like a guard dog. I, I see like a nice little path, patch of, of grass and under some nice trees, and I'm you know just gonna sleep there. You are pretty comfortable, you know, sleeping on the ground, but you can tell you know that Karen is way less than comfortable with it. He's like not stoked on having this like group. I, I wouldn't know that unless they said that to me. Like yeah, okay. I just don't have like the the like you know human social. <laughs> patterns like yeah so, so, so social blind i'm gonna do that unless unless sure they kick yeah. you out unless someone like complains yeah and, I, and i'm not saying that's what we're doing now i'm 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 picturing it like you guys have basically just left donnell's place so it is it is evening you know it's definitely getting dark and, and I'm, uh, I'm thinking that i will impose on 
the Goldie family by taking the <laughs> clearly not uh, appreciated <laughs> offer that Hell Chad yeah. gives. So what do y'all want to do? You might call an evening. Do you want to celebrate with a beverage? We all going to get drunk together? <laughs> oh, I love the idea of us all going out to a Vauna has no idea what you're together. talking about. Um, I whoa. mean, we always need a party mom, though. Well, has the Vauna never gotten... At the end of the night. No, I mean, she knows what booze is, but, like, she doesn't fucking... You don't she fuck, with, fuck that. with that shit. No, I'm... I'm she's hardcore 1000% all the time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Absent until the day you die. Um, but if y'all drink, I'll, I'll hang out. Well, like I was saying, someone's got to hold their hair back at the end of the night. <laughs> Makes good sense to me. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I feel like we have our designated driver, you know, <laughs> yeah. and you're like strong enough that you could just like carry us home. I remember some bar fights, you guys. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm gonna go with the ball part. I mean, let's not start any fights. <laughs> I have a feeling one of us will accidentally provoke a fight. That does seem like something we. I do. unfortunately think you might be right, but I'm still not on board with that part of the plan. <laughs> we'll see where the night takes us. Well, Donald seemed uh, pretty keen to recommend the candle and cauldron. Let's just go there. Make it happen. I take us all there. I lead the way. Because <laughs> you know. I'm the ranger, so I'm supposed to lead the way. Right, you know the way. I'm going to leave my armor and weapons at the temple because they're all super heavy. And I'm just here to have a good time. I'm not here to fight. <laughs> I hope we don't get jumped. Yeah, I hope we can get your tighter because all I have right now is a dagger. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so you guys head over to this inn, this candle and cauldron. Now, um, some of you would already be familiar with this establishment. It's this large, uh, really warmly lit inn. It has like a big courtyard. It's kind of an, a big L shape. And, um, you know, there's dozens of rooms and there's a large like entertainment hall where there's always something coming coming and going there's you know bards performing and um yeah there's there's all kinds of stuff going on around there in general tonight it's pretty busy it's not slammed but the interior is you know bustling it's noisy there's normal pub stuff going on and you know kind of as you guys settle into a table and put your orders in and, and get a drink. A kind of like really haggard, like scarred up halfling. This guy with his like, he's like missing an ear. He's, he's just like this big gash like through his lip. And, you know, he's like losing hair. He's in very dark clothes and he's sopping wet. He sort of saunters up alone to the table with all of you. And he says, Ah, oh, Chadeus, my boy. It's so good to see ya. <laughs> Share a drink with your old friend Olmo, why don't ya? And he sort of like plops up on the table and he sets down in front of him this like long knife in a scabbard. He's he's a guy that we uh we were that the person that we initially delivered that wine to in what is Marvel? Um mm. uh Told your guys' dad to have you avoid this guy all the oh, oh, time. Right. According to my notes. Well, damn, that makes me really. Hey. Wild. <laughs> that makes me wow. think he's really cool. And <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, hi, Olmo. I'm not so sure about this interaction. Hello. Uh, v- Vauna what says, "What do you want?" Yeah. Like, oh, I- I just want to share a drink with you. What's the problem? And he sort of like waves to have like a, a round sent over. Come on, Chadius. We should give this guy a shot. How bad could it be? <laughs> it's totally fine. You know, I'm uh, sure Chadius doesn't owe him money. Their da- father told us to avoid you. Me? Oh, oh my yes. God, you avoid Go. me? Go. Hey, Vauna, come on, come on. It's let's keep it easy. He said you know? to he said Well now I'm saying that we don't need to worry about that. 
Don't worry about it. I go way back with these ones. Says we're fine. Really? You go you go way back with them. Said, well, maybe not way back, but me and Chideus, we've seen some things, haven't we? <laughs> Meet them down. Oh, always the sour face, Chideus. Oh boy. Not here. Not like this. <laughs> no. No. He says, now something very interesting has come to my attention. Uh, a friend of mine heard from a friend of his that you are making some pretty powerful friends. Uh, looks around at <laughs> people I'm with. I really don't know what you're talking about. I'm here with them. He says, no, no, no. Not these ones. I'm talking about Donnell <laughs> Cartway. I heard you went into his vault. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Doing a sleight of hand to hide the fact that I'm just straight up wearing something out of that vault. Wait, <laughs> did that work? All right, 17. Yeah, he doesn't seem to like really pick up on that at all. And But he does like pick up that you are getting a little nervous and you sense it like, that might kind of be like his intent here, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he says, well, have you seen it or what? It looks around the table at all of you. Have you all seen it? I don't know what it is. Yes, Who we just came from there. there. <laughs> well, I like this one. Fair enough. Cat's out of the bag. So what can you tell your old friend, Omo? What information have you got for me, little bird? Oh, well, I don't know if we have any information for free. No, of course. Nothing's free. So how badly do you want this information? Well, it depends on the information, doesn't it? You want to know if we've been in the vault? I want to know what you know. Okay. Well, we where want to know it? how much you're Where is it in the it. house? How does it get in? I see. Can we speak privately? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Olmo. Not suspicious at all. Totally fine. <laughs> we're fine. He says, hey, we're all friends here, aren't we? No. <laughs> I'm yeah, just we... being friends with these guys, so <laughs> you're definitely off the table. <laughs> okay, he says, says, all right, all right. I'll give you a minute to talk it over. And then he just sort of like gets up and goes over to the bar. All right. Do we want to give this guy information? I'm. F I like. I. I'm fine what? with giving you information. I think it'd be a nice what? little way to pad our pockets. I don't like giving him information. Donna I mean... would have no way of 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 understanding this, but like it's gonna look obvious that we fucking were just there, and then you get to harm the. Yeah. I want to steal shit myself from that vault, and I really don't want the, this guy to get there first. So, rather All not. Right. I'd rather not. Okay, so Olmo comes uh, back over the table, and he, uh, yeah, he says, says, "Well, what do you say, my boy? Tired of picking pockets? Want to make a little more money?" Picking pockets is the first thing to that. Uh, well, Vana wants no part of this. I kind of feel also that um, Basil's not interested, just not out of like ethics, but that <clears throat> the person we might be betraying is probably more helpful to know than this ragamuffin. Yeah, I'm not inclined to be super forthcoming to this man. Yeah, sorry, Alma. It seems like we're all out. I okay, mean, Virginia, you could just go do it by yourself. I mean, you could just, like... I could, and maybe I will, but for now, I'm not. <laughs> oh, good. He, okay, cool. he sort of, his, like, expression darkens significantly uh, at the rejection. And he, uh, yeah, in just sort of, like, a, a much quieter tone, he says, says, well, I really thought we were becoming friends, Chen. I even know where you live. I mean, Ooh. everybody knows where I live. I know where they live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she sleeps outside, and she waits. She waits for people like you. 
Look at yeah. that. Look at that woman and tell me you want to come fuck with me where I live. I scoot sort of behind Vauna. <laughs> he says, "Well, she is big, but I promise she's not as dangerous." And then he like scoots his chair back from the table like aggressively and kind of storms she, off. Did those drinks he was waving over ever show up? Did we ever get that round of drinks? Just as he's leaving, the like barmaid is walking over and he just like he's walking past and just fucking like bops them all up out of her hand. Oh, oh my come God. on. Wow, yeah, what a fucking dick. Oh no. <laughs> I stand up and I say, How dare you, sir? This is a woman performing a very important task here. He's he's gone. He's like storming uh, out. He's got no time. Yeah, I just like... really, really wanted this barmaid to hear what an ally <laughs> I am. In general, the crowd her. is kind of like, <gasps> they're like, what the fuck? And everybody's like, jump back a little bit. And he like makes a little bit of scene. Like, I go up to her and I, I help her pick up the beer and I help her mop it up. And then <laughs> I try to hit on her. <laughs> Did you, Probably did not. You know that? It. Can can did we get a roll? Know, can we get a roll for for this this a, a attempt roll to... for flirtation? Yeah. I really have a feeling this is disadvantage here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think generally you you're role... consorting with this horrible little man. So yeah, go ahead, go <laughs> ahead and roll a, a charisma check. Uh, I was just gonna do like <laughs> performance or persuasion. I'm is plus zero because I don't know what else to. Oh, I guess I can just do a d20, huh? A Seven. D20. I flirt with her at a seven. Yeah, she sort of like, like shies away from you a little bit. She's like, did you know that horrible little man? If it helps, we're the reason he was upset. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's your oh that's your fault. a beer bottle on you. Yeah, <laughs> she says, oh, that's... Uh... He is right. She says, well, I'll, I'll get you another round. Let's, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's like very apologetic and like really awkward around you. I mean, fair. I'm used she's to worried. it. She's worried you might also lash out. Vana pats you on the back. We she's all out of your chat. Sometimes. I would say I'm off putting. Yeah, you, got, you guys are sat here, sort of in the back, and, and over in this corner, picture there's no table here. Instead, there's a stage, and there's been a musician here playing while you guys were talking to Olmo. And yeah, as you guys are, you know, as, as Olmo leaves and you're, you fail horribly to flirt, the musician that was uh kind of like looting along uh wraps up gets a kind of medium round of applause and then uh sort of like a stout man with um sort of like long but thinning hair he he gets up on the stage and he says, <coughs> he says oh uh thank you for that he says no it's, uh i guess you were headliner for the evening this is uh Ben, Ben Tavin, Ben, ben Tavin, Ben Tavin. <laughs> and then he, he like gets off and then this like really sort of like, you know, roguishly handsome man like like takes the stage and he's got like a like a little stringed instrument and he comes up on stage with a, uh, like a small uh, barrel and he sits it down in front of him and he sits in a chair and he puts his feet up on the barrel <laughs> And he starts kind of like strumming kind of quietly and people go back to their drinks um, before he pipes up in this kind of like loud and theatrical voice. He says, <clears throat> good people of Harlem, sit back now and listen to a tale of true tragedy. It starts just a few years back. The tavern owner, notorious around this town for being cheap. Now, this certainly didn't happen in this town. No, no, no. This town has too many brave adventurers for something as despicable as this to ever happen. And it like, gets like a little bit of a chuckle after it. Now, the tavern owner in question had a problem with pestering little forest gnomes. And I can tell by the looks I'm getting that you understand. Yes, yes, the gnomes are mischievous little creatures, always playing tricks on the unsuspecting and such. The tavern owner never had been fond of these gnomes, but until a fateful day last autumn, he did tolerate them. And then everybody's sort of like looking around, and he, he, he makes this like really obvious look down at this barrel that's right in front of us. Now we all know that there's a line 
There are forbidden magics that should never be uttered and targets that should never be chosen. You see, the forest gnomes cast a spell and made all the owner's nest ale, best ale taste like simple spring water. And as he's talking, I want, I want you guys to give me a uh, perception roll, those of you that are proficient in it. It's one of my only skills. Whoa. 24, motherfuckers. Wow. Chatty says no intelligence or charisma, but he has a lot of wisdom, sort of ironically. Yeah, I, I do kind of get that vibe, actually. I think he, I, I, I mean, it's, it's a diluted kind of wisdom, but it's... As he starts telling the story, um, you're looking around the room, Chad, and you see that there are two women that are, like, brightly dressed. They're, they don't blend in that well, but they're maybe not really trying to, and they're sort of, like, walking through the crowded room like near the bar and stuff and they're they just look a little out of place and you just it, it occurs to you that maybe it would it would be you to keep an eye on the two uh, okay so you notice these these two women sort of walking around and then he uh he carries on he says now it is at this point i must make something perfectly clear this particular tavern owner was a dwarf a dwarf that had been carefully aging that ale for many years. And to his credit, the dwarf asked the gnome to reverse the spell. But when the gnome laughed at him, the dwarf took his axe and split the gnome's skull right in half. There's like some, a little bit of like gasping and people are like really starting to like perk up now that there's like some murder. Oh. No! <laughs> no! And... Donna says, what? What? <laughs> he says, now, what happened next is somewhat unclear. Some say the blow was so fierce that some of the gnome's blood spewed directly into an open cask. Others say it was a more malicious and intentional process. And that night, as the town drank their ale, all manner of odd occurrences began happening. Sparks began flying from the town gossip's mouth and hands as she burned alive in place in the tavern. One man, a widower, became convinced that his mug was talking to him in the voice of his late wife. And the crowd's sort of like chuckling. And he, he stands up at this point and he moves sort of like intentionally behind this like, you know, small cast that he's, that he's brought up. And he gestures down at it with his hand and people sort of like go by. Now perhaps you think I've come to sell you some ale. If so, you might be wrong. And then he kicks the cask like really violently and the lid flies off and it goes like rolling down kind of the middle between some tables. And uh, it's like, it goes rolling and people like really near him sort of like jump up and you can see that the cask is uh, empty. And as it rolls, just like a few, it leaves like a very small trickle of like red fluid behind as it goes. And he says, now I come to give you a gift, and I do so hope you've all enjoyed your drinks. And go ahead and roll initiative for me. Oh shit! Okay. Uh, right this is Ben Tavin. He's handsome as fuck. Oh shit! Sexy he is handsome. Got it. He's not this big. But... He's not this big. <laughs> he sort of kicks this cask and uh, reveals what you assume to mean that he has poisoned the crowd. It basically erupts into fucking pandemonium. People are like freaking out. You you look over and a woman is like spewing like sparks from her mouth as she like screams. Like she's just like flying out of her mouth. Um, another man, there's a man who's like uh, apparently like convinced that he's hearing like screaming voices and he's like clawing at his ears and freaking out. Chideas and Bauna, give me another perception roll. Okay, you notice that these these two figures, maybe maybe Chideas, you sort of tip Bauna off that you've been keeping an eye on these two. You notice that these two women now are like calm as cucumbers and they are sort of like moving as people are like sort of panicking and like bumping into each other and maybe like making oh, for the dang. doors and shit. They're like moving really calmly uh, between them and Ben Tavin is like on stage and he is sort of like 
Uh, he's got kind of this wry smile on his face. All right, Basil, what do you want to do? Um, well, am I feeling any effects of this? Like, am I myself feeling weird or? You you feel fine, but um, you all just got here. Got you it. Know? But we, you haven't, but really, we heard the you haven't really been drinking. Um, I'm going to, can I just do like a, just cast a little bit of ice and like hold him in place in case he's going to try and run. Okay. Ice master. I've got like a million icy spells and prestidigitation and like trickery stuff. Can I just like do some ability check to? I mean, you can fuck with them, I guess. He's on, he's on the other side of the room and there's like people bustling between the two of you, you know? Would there be like, okay. There's I mean, definitely you're... like, you know, like obstructed terrain, like difficult terrain to get there. And even your visibility to him is like intermittent being so tiny. Where do you, you don't have little icons for the ladies? Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll get I'll get them in here. Honestly. Let's see these ladies. Are they as hot as? Yeah, let's uh, see. <laughs> are they as hot as the waitress? Okay, there's uh, there's your two women, and I'll put Van Tavin up here too. Oh yeah, baby, we can see down that one's dress. Hubba hubba! <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Basil, what's your plan here? He's laying on hand once for for him. Um, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I guess maybe like because I'm not one of the ones that had perception about what's going on. I'll try and like get my wits about me. I don't know. Pass. Next. Next person. <laughs> Basil seems not entirely sure about what to do, and you watch as the uh, one of the women just continues to sort of like move through the crowd uh, smoothly. People are starting to like push their way uh, toward these like doors. Wait, where is it? Okay, so she just moves over here and um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to see exactly what she's doing, but she's just uh, moving around. And then uh, Ben Tavin is like, he sort of like, yeah, same thing. He's like moving around on stage and he's, he starts going this way, but it doesn't seem in any particular rush. And, and it's yeah. like obvious pandemonium, like everyone is aware that Shit is going crazy in here. Yeah, yeah, and people like don't really know which way to look. You know, they're not like looking at Ben Tavin like he's some sort of obvious villain or whatever. They're like looking at this woman who's like spewing sparks and freaking out. And like, um, yeah, even just like the last couple of seconds here, like another man, his like hands have gotten like enormous. He's like, like waving around these like giant hands that are flailing. <laughs> Virginia, you're up. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna start taking action. I'm gonna, I'm Take gonna push the table over. Yeah, we have covered. <laughs> okay, yeah, all the like drinks and shit just go like scattering everywhere, and it barely draws any attention from anybody in the crowd. Perfect. We don't want any of those drinks anyway. They're <laughs> fucking super poisoned or something. Hmm. I don't think I'm. I'm gonna wait on shooting anybody. <laughs> I just want to have this cover. You don't want to just start blasting? Okay, Ayumi. Yeah. All right. I am going to... Uh, I hear this, this story about, you know, days and crap and little dudes crossing things and then crap goes down. I don't have armor, but I do have my holy symbol, so I am going to use my the blessed spell. I'm going to bless everyone but the wizard, since I'm assuming he'll be the most immune to magic, hopefully. I don't know how accurate that is. My character does not know. Um, <laughs> you just why, call why me the you wizard? Blessed? You're a goddamn sorcerer, sir. It's a magic thing, I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's all wizards to Ayumi. It, yeah, I'm... <laughs> yeah, just some arcane bullshit. So I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, um, Chavius, Virginia, and, um, uh, why can't I think of your name? Vauna. Um, okay. And so you're all blessed. You get a, a D4 to any saving throws or attack rolls. Hell yeah. Okay. So we've got uh, Ayumi and Virginia kind of ducked behind the table. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Shadu. I saw the shady ladies. <laughs> I'm guessing all of the drinks fell when the table flipped. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fucking mess. This this table has drinks on it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's drinks on on all the on tables. all these tables. I agree, sure. 
All right. I saw this shady lady doing doing shady stuff. And so I'm going to try to do some action to flip over this shit. And then I want to knock this <laughs> table towards her. Do you want to maybe sh shout it out so that we know that I guess you're maybe now that you're taking action against her, we'll all realize. But we um, all still don't know that there's like shady ladies, right? I guess maybe I now mean, we've noticed they're calm. You're definitely going to find out. See that I just shot a table with some poor woman. <laughs> shot a table, you shoot a table. table. You uh you just like push from underneath and you just like fling it, fling it towards her with the beer. Even if I can't get her with the table. <laughs> there's some other people in there too. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay. They're, uh, they're at the table. It's collateral damage. No, no, no. Everybody's like stood up and sort of like. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, right. I don't really care about collateral damage. That's fine. We're already flipping tables for a bar fight. I really don't think we're going to be working <laughs> back at this establishment again. Okay, go ahead and roll me, go ahead and roll me a D4 damage. So, yeah, it does kind of clatter into her and she stumbles a bit, but it doesn't like knock her over or anything. Uh, and she did take some damage. Okay, Vana, you're up. Nobody's I mean, like, she would probably be like concerned for herself primarily. Um, well, maybe so. Do I see like any other, like any more of this wine anywhere? Do I see any, any more barrels? I mean, I presume like you said people were poisoned, right? Yeah, Ben Tavon like told the story about the you know, the poisoned cask and then showed everybody the like empty cask and then everybody started freaking out. So we don't know for sure that it came from drinking. You feel fine. We feel fine and we didn't. Have we been drink? I haven't been drinking. Were we there long enough to really drink much of the drinks? No. Yeah, none, none of you had like a whole round. Mm -hmm. Because he spilled all drinks. <laughs> yeah. And what we had was like wine or whatever. The same so thing that everyone else was having. Um, oh, okay. okay. You feel right, fine. Gonna... Your, hand, your hands are normal size. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't okay. know how it hands on yeah. normal. Maybe normal for Hall. I'm just gonna like kind of yeah. I'm just gonna like I don't I don't think I have anything to do here really aside from like hide under the table. Honestly, this all I don't think I've ever done that. I don't think I've ever like completely a fucking mess right now. For yeah, Vaughn, <laughs> my action. I mean, that's how I felt. How do you think I felt? That's it. <laughs> I mean, you could have okay. read some sort of action. This woman here, after you slam the table down, she sort of like yells out and um, maybe starting to realize that she's in some kind of danger. She Her demeanor changes quite a bit and she starts like bolting to the door. She like kind of goes around this table and she goes over here. The uh, that just looks like another table for me to knock over, man. I looked like <laughs> before her. What is she thinking? How many tables will it take? I'm going to keep leaping over shit. Okay, uh, Basil, we're, we're back to you. I am the one that um, wanted to start a bar fight. I think that I am now probably ready to start attacking the dude, because what, what he, what's he still doing? What On his he... last turn, he basically was just like, you know, gathering his things. He was like looking out over the crowd. And uh, he didn't seem in any particular hurry. And he was just sort of like, you know, slowly making his way off stage and also appears to be heading toward the door. Okay. Can I, can I do some like kind of fun, a mix of one of my very icy spells with like prestidigitation and my, my skills in little icy cantrips and like freeze his feet. I don't have like a hold person. But I feel like I could come up with something. I literally have like five spells that have frost or ice or chill in the name that all involve <laughs> chewing ice, making the cold. Okay, space. how about I'll give you this? How about there's like enough like spilled sort of like liquid ah, all, all over the floor that uh, you can roll to attempt to freeze some of it with a level one how spell. How and about this? He, I'll, I'll meet you halfway and press to digitate, which actually I'm allows me to. already meeting your ass halfway. No, well, then, I, then we can meet three quarters. Because <laughs> if I press to digitate, that I can chill a cubic foot of material. And so I'm just saying that sounds pretty straightforward. I'm chilling it to the point of freezing. And the, the cubic feet are his feet. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Here's what I'm saying is the effect, if you want to try to interfere with his mobility, that's a level one spell. Okay, cool. I'm in. Okay. So um, yeah, you can try to freeze some ground. Not his feet. I'm going to say you can freeze like a puddle underneath them to like try to fuck with their ability to escape. Okay. This area right here uh, now has... Um, you you seem pretty convinced that there's a uh, a good chance that it's it's gone quite slippery through there. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I I freeze it. Okay. In the meantime, some other people are trying to get uh, through the door here. That's now all ice as fuck. And uh, yeah, this this sort of portly man goes. He's like sort of pushing his way past, and he sort of like bumps into this woman here, and then like slips and falls right right in front of the door. Uh, and he, go, he goes down pretty hard, like a sack of potatoes. And he's Damn. just like, see, see, she sort of like moves over and she's like looking over at Ben Tavin expectantly. And she also starts moving toward the door here. Uh, yeah, and she sort of stumbles on this on this guy that's in front of the door. And she's trying to like move him away from the door so they can get it back open. I freeze him in place. <laughs> no, don't freeze him in place. His body is ice. Ben Tavin sort of looks around and he looks at, he looks across the room at the group and this like unexpected sort of ice magic and then he makes like kind of like locks eyes with you Basil and gives you like a little wink before he turns to this window right here and just like blips through it. No. Yeah, it just like he just goes and he's gone out the window. What a dick. Oh man. Okay, Should we go out like, the back door and try and find him? I want to go to the window and see if I can give a little parting shot. <laughs> you know, like try to like sh- shoot him in the leg or something? Or I don't think you, you can like I don't think you can get that far like to the window. Oh, it's that window. Sorry, <laughs> I thought it was a different window. Ice or something. You could like you could try to like come here and see if he like went straight out the window, or you could uh, just use all of your. You can double your speed by using your action yeah you can try to run outside and see if you can see him but i'll do that actually run outside i'll try to follow him yeah i'm a ranger i'm good at tracking i can track him down do i have to pass Uh, through the ice to do that yeah you do so one of my one of the things (laughs) i get from natural explorer is that i ignore difficult terrain okay is that relevant who knows sounds relevant Okay, go over the thing. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's not difficult terrain in the same way that like a pile of rocks is. This is like a magical effect that's like a grease or something. Okay, should I still roll then? Yeah, go ahead. And, yeah, go ahead and roll a. Uh, well, Dex. roll roll your choice of acrobatics or athletics over his spell PC. Hi, yeah. <laughs> Damn it! I got a two. <laughs> Guys, yeah, what's yeah. happening? You sort of like run to the door using your full sprint and you're just like running fucking full steam ahead and you're like fumbling with your crossbow like I'm gonna fucking shoot this asshole and you just like take a skid on this thing you slam right into this guy right next to this one. Whoop! <laughs> what? Damn! Okay, also, I slam it. All right, so these people are just seem to be leaving pretty quickly. I don't think it would be too difficult to try to stop these these ladies from getting out. So I'm just going to use double movement as well uh, to bring myself just right outside the ice, just so I get within engage range with her so that if she, I'm going to draw my dagger with a bonus action and just, so if she goes out of engage range with me, I can get an opportunity attack. Okay, today is. Well, you know what I'm going to do. The table. <laughs> it's table time. I'm gonna. I'm flip gonna flip. The table. It's actually you because you did that cop slide on the desk last time, and yeah. you're you, you got a lot of table action. I on. just I really like the effect. I think I look really cool. I can accomplish many things by just yeah. like using tables. I guess. So like, I'm gonna oh, try to do a cool table thing. towards this lady <laughs> and just try not to hit my sister. There's no way that you're flipping 
a big ass table into them without hitting everybody in the way. So I mean, I'm just, I'm, just saying, I'm gonna try just so she knows I'm going to make an effort to not hit the table, but I'm still knocking this table over. Hell yeah. Okay. Okay, Virginia, go ahead and go ahead and give me a uh, uh, acrobatics save, and you do have bless. See, it's fine. I knew you would bless. I figured you could get yourself out of this. What do I add for bless? Yeah. Like one d four or something. D four, yeah. Good thing I rolled a two again. Yeah. Holy oh. shit! How? Roll it. Good thing the stage. Uh, maybe you right actually right. are cursed. Like I think my whole like <laughs> belief system I think you're about like my cursed. whole atheism and everything might be completely wrong because <laughs> I'm convinced you are actually it's cursed. Voodoo. I just like spit on a bunch of gypsies on the way here. You know? Oh <laughs> Jesus, Noah! <laughs> you do that a lot. Is that a common? <laughs> a two damage. Yep. And Damn, I'm a man of many twos. This matter you're up. Uh, okay, so I guess like she's now seeing that the squad has some intention here, so I'm just gonna go along with it. And uh, she wants to try and like grab one of these like ladies and stop them from moving. So can I just go like here and grab yeah, yeah. a lady? Sure. And just to like keep them from running. Yeah, roll an athletics check to grapple. All right, it's a, I, I have a plus four to that, so let's... Love it. 15. Oof, they did oh. really well. It's slippery. You actually still succeed. Ah, uh, they're not very sympathetic. <laughs> yeah, well, how is she reacting? She's struggling. She's really trying. She's fucking freaking out. You're insanely terrifying to her. I say, stop moving! <laughs> One way to do it. Yeah, she's just like squirming like crazy, and you're she's just like trying to, to bust out. Basil, you see this other one is still uh, desperately trying to escape, and it looks like she's made some progress on getting this guy out of the way. So. Okay, I'm gonna just straight up attack her <laughs> with with lethal force. I just want to clarify Ooh. it up front. That's my favorite kind of force. Okay, I'm gonna uh, use a chill touch. Um, a plursk. Plus five. This is this isn't gonna hit. Thirteen to hit. Yeah, it hits. Oh shit! All like right, cool. Seven. I get to um, take one d eight necrotic damage and can't regain hit points until the start of its next turn. And the hand clings on. Um, and so he says, "Going somewhere," and like the hand grabs and starts pulling. Um, so one. Do the hands talk? No, I say it. Yeah, cool, so yeah. six damage. Cool, yeah, she's like trying, she's got her back turned to you, she's like trying to get this door open, she's like got it open a wedge, and you uh, reach out with the chill touch, and this like sort of ghastly hand that is barely visible just like reaches inside of her and just like snuffs her light out, and she just like crumbles to the ground. Dang. Okay, cool. Basil, Basil just went full homicide. <laughs> you killed one of the ladies. <laughs> I didn't think that Vulcan death grip her to de icy death. I didn't know it would kill her. Yeah. <laughs> what? Big ass red X. <laughs> Tell me it wasn't the one with the cleavage. Oh god, it was the cleavage. The cleavage. No. Would somebody please think of the cleavage? <laughs> we were gonna get married. <laughs> okay. Sorry, everybody. All right, so Virginia, yeah, you're there, and the, you and this woman are kind of struggling for a minute, and then she just like goes limp, and her skin instantly becomes cold to the touch, and she just like falls at your feet there. I like how I got shit for throwing a table at this woman, and yet, um, I didn't think a D8 was gonna kill her. I'm just stunned by this more than anything. So yeah, yikes. Yeah, yeah, that's a big yikes. A little murder for you. Okay. Yo, I'm, I'm just going to come out and say it. That's my bad. I'm going to you know I'm gonna take responsibility. <laughs> I, didn't even mean to, I didn't even mean to kill them. You take full ownership. You just fucking know, murdered yeah. someone. You just straight you know up what? murdered someone. We in don't know. Maybe she deserved it. We don't know. Maybe she deserved it. Do I have to roll anything to like stand up or no. move off of this? Yeah, no, you're fine. Yeah, you weren't you weren't prone. You just like couldn't move through it. 
successfully. So you're okay. Oh man, I suppose that I can't see him. Yeah, he's there. He's nowhere to be found. There's like there's like some people oh. standing out here in the rain, like looking, like sort of confused, like at the ruckus that's going on. But yeah, it, yeah, you don't see, you don't see Ben Tavin. Damn it! I thought I got something for tracking people, but that's my hunter's mark. It's the hunter's mark, right? But the hunter's mark? No, I mean the, like um, as mark. a ranger, I thought that I could just track people. Like that was a thing I could do. I mean, you can do like a roll, right? Yeah, you can do a survival check, I think. Um, I'll do a survival check up. to see if I can follow his tracks. You like find some like poop and broken sticks. He's been here. <laughs> <laughs> he pooped here. He pooped in the last I ten seconds. Anywhere. <laughs> I mean, you gotta go. It's really just jumps yeah. out the window, and pulls his pants down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta go. <laughs> your mechanic is that when you're tracking your favored enemy, you get advantage. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't have picked beasts. Now should I have? Uh, go ahead, yeah, go ahead and uh, throw me a survival check. It's like raining out here and you're in town, you know, there's like cobblestone streets and shit. It's like, this is a really insanely hard. Uh, okay. You, Not going to do it? You, you feel like you get a really good look around and there's like no indication. Like even the people that are standing around, you know, they don't indicate that they've seen anybody at all either. Does does he see the the former... Like tavern goers, or have they all just completely spread out, gone home? Uh, yeah, they sort of like the only a few have actually like made it out so far, and uh, yeah, they've oh. just out into like the crowds, and uh, yeah, there's like there's like, a little bit of people like starting to gather like on the other side of the street and stuff, and, and then um, uh, I will say that uh, you guys notice that um, all of the sort of anomalies that were happening happening seemed to leave with Ben Tappen. Oh, geez. So I killed that lady Damn. for no fucking reason. <laughs> hey, those ladies were shading, okay? I'm sure it was justified. Well, we still yeah. got the one in. I, it seems like they were complicit in some way. Or yep. You want I, you want I should kill her, too? Okay. <laughs> <You> want... <laughs> kill hey, man, how about you just kill this one, also? You're already here. So. Let me give her the old ice <laughs> strangle. <laughs> You're already a brutal crime lord, so <laughs> I didn't You're mean to be brutal crime. Okay, Ayumi, you are up. So yeah, you guys. Well, I guess actually, let's go ahead and go out of the issue here. The, yeah, but then, like I feel like we're we sort of done with this whole fighting thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not much of a fight to begin with, but yeah. So I mean, well, does what's her name still have to make like a save to get out of my grapple? One. Well, she's still like she's kind of like struggling, but the strength is going out of her. I mean, she's not really a fighter, you know. She's just like, a, I'm a big ass, fucking strong ass Goliath, <laughs> dude. You're so fucking strong. Um, but and like yeah, seven she, feet she still like struggles for a minute, and then uh, actually, as as her uh, kind of compatriot goes limp, she does the same. She becomes sort of more docile as, as her friend died. <laughs> And uh, you know, realizes that she's in some kind of like mortal danger here. And so so people like generally are, you know, calmed down a bit. There's, you know, still so, still so quite a bit of bustling like around at the tavern here. The like tavern owner sort of like pushes through the crowd and he like comes up to you guys and he's like, he's like, Wow, what the fuck is this? Like, what? what's happening here? Get the fuck out of my bar and all this thing. He's like yelling at everybody, and just like vacate. No, bro. He's like furious. And he's like there's like a body here in it. And uh, <laughs> as you're sort of like assessing the the wreckage and as the bartender's looking around, you hear like a bell start to ring in the in the uh, in the distance right in the middle of town. Just like this ding 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 ding. Okay, okay, wait, so I'm I'm gonna take this opportunity uh, to kind of sweet talk this guy and let make sure he knows that we're the good guys and that like explain to him what we saw. And um, explain that we basically stopped it, but I'm also gonna like use a little bit of like deception okay. in that, or I guess like, I could go straight like charisma, but um, I want to try and like kind of really charm him, you know, because he's mad at us, right? Uh, yeah, he's, like, telling... the whole situation, but he's definitely focused on you guys being like the most. I mean, you all stick out like a sort of bar, yeah, you're like, yeah, you got this woman, like, so... right 
well then you just kill the person so <laughs> so, okay. can i try and like sp- kill sp- sp- talk him <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm gonna do oh this that wasn't very good um i'm doing uh deception which is another five so that was only 12 what's the, um, what's the lie you're telling thir- there's only 13 basically it's just like a kind of assuaging his fears and being like Oh, this like all this shit broke out out of nowhere. We were trying to protect your bar, and we uh, were trying to stop them. And there's like a bad guy who ran away, and like he killed this girl on his way out. I guess really the, by, no, by deception, I'm like deceiving our, like our involvement in the situation and making painting us to be. I mean, we kind of were the good guys, other than the corpse. Who Ben Tavern or whatever his name is killed? We all saw it. <laughs> I mean, it did happen. Fauna totally. is really tempted to uh, to 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 be like you. You killed her, but uh, oh, she's she is oh. she's like barely holding herself back. I'll tell them know. when they get here what will happen if they ask. So what? I'm like, yeah, trust me you with your shady bullshit. Okay? <laughs> really? I mean, come on, man. I mean, you, you're an accessory, Ayumi. I'm just trying to help all of us out here. <laughs> I will take the, the punishment that I'm due if that's the case, you know. So, yeah, the, the barkeep doesn't really seem to convince. He's like, I know what I saw. He's like, that Ben Tag and Ben, whatever the fuck his name was, he was gone before any of this happened. Oh, jeez. Bro, well, not no. any of it. There was plenty happening when he was still here. Okay, yeah, so you guys are kind of like milling around. This woman's still squirming in your arm. She's like, let me go. Like once in a while, she'll just like give you a little fight, but she doesn't really have any chance of breaking out of your group. I want to, um, I'll let you guys keep talking to this Baki or whatever. I'm going to wait outside for the god so I can, you know, be there <laughs> when they get you here. Can... Narc on us. Honestly, so that we don't try to lie to them and get ourselves in more trouble. Okay, I, I kind of like what? that plan, actually. Fair. Basil likes that. Probably gonna get Wait a minute, there's a, a decent d- ditches. person on our, a, a reasonably intelligent person. <laughs> hey, it was worth a shot. Everyone admits it. We all know. <laughs> what, murdering her? So I better no, not murdering her. Lying about it. Yeah, the, the woman in your arms, like she, she sort of like bows her head and she sobs. She just says, "Shayla, sweet Shayla." We just killed her life partner, didn't we? Oh no! Yeah, I hope so. I go. I I shake her and I go, "Where man go?" I don't. I don't. I don't know where he went. How would I know? I you. We just met him a couple hours ago. Oh. She is. She, is she dead? Oh, she's super dead. Ooh. <laughs> I love you putting it that way. Oh, yeah, she's super dead. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. That's taken care of. Yeah. Let there be, let there be no you. doubt in your mind. Yeah. Now she, you get the apartment to yourself. Person. Yeah, she, it's like, she says, so stupid. Nobody, nobody was supposed to get hurt. He said, what no. was supposed to happen? Well, yeah, she says, uh, she says, we were just supposed to. You know, pull, pull a trick and, and lift some coin. Nobody was supposed to get hurt. Lift some coin? How are you going to lift any coin by making people's hands large? You know, like a, just a distraction. It worked, didn't it? No. Well, what happened? Your friend is definitely dead, so I don't know how well that worked. Yeah, there's, there's that. Um. All right, let's finish terrorizing these poor people. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you all sense that there is like some impending uh, bureaucracy here, that there's like some cops coming down on you. Do you want to do anything? Can I do it like intimidation to try and make sure we're getting the truth out of her? Yeah, I mean, she's like, yeah, she doesn't seem to be lying to you. She's like totally, she has like barely any fight in her at all. I mean, mm. she's struggling against you once in a while. She's just like, I mean, her friend had like four hit points, something like that. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, there's the, the body on the ground, and there's, like, you know, kind of across from you guys here, um, you know, like, like over here on the other side of the street, there's, like, 
quite a bit of a crowd gathering now. You know, the bell's ringing, <laughs> this big ruckus here, and there's like all these people kind of showing up. And Donna says, we must leave. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, let's bail. Um, I do a flourishing bow, like this was all on purpose, and then I slink out. Okay. Um, um, just like on the street, you're just trying to go to like... Is there like, does it look like there's any other entrance? Yeah, is there like a back door we could use? Uh, yeah, there'd be like a back door, you know, through the kitchen or whatever, but... Real quick, just just real quick. How well is everyone in this town going to know us? Because I feel like there's... How many Goliaths are there? And like two of the people live here. And then like a paladin. Yeah, we could stick around and like play the self-defense angle or trying to capture people who were clearly hurting others. As far as we knew... Because there were people who he's like talking about blood and people were like choking and scratching their eyes. Out. Are we really going to be calling stand your ground laws? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> I mean, we were we thought we thought these people were, were being hurt. I have my rights. <laughs> Got my rights, spare arms. A man's I house is his castle. arms in this bar. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting around debating it, you hear like the like heavy trot of, of feet and the you know sort of the sort of jingle jangle of chain mail come like around the corner and <clears throat> there's like eight guards with pikes they like come around and they're in like kind of a loose formation they're not like a super well-trained military unit or whatever but they like you know come through and uh they're they're led up by a man with a, a helmet that has like some a little bit of decoration on top this like little feather unit and he's like he sort of runs up to the group here and he's like he just demands to know what's happened. And a fight had broken out in, in the bar. Some magic was cast upon the, um, I don't know what you call people, who, the, the, you know, customers, hey, I trends. guess. Patrons, hey, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Patrons. Uh, Patrons. Hey, um, we tried to stop them. The main leader got away. One of the goals that we have captured and another one unfortunately died during the skull mission. <laughs> you seem like sort of surprised to have just gotten like a straight answer, just like the DM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so very well, well, don't go anywhere. And he sort of gestures for you to go like stand by the guards. And of course. He, he goes to like step inside. Do we and have to like I, give a statement here? Can we <laughs> go? You're sort of standing there and there's a, uh, yeah, the guards are like keeping a close eye on you guys. And um, you know this, this crowd is still like like joined around, and uh, he yeah he goes in for a minute, and you can hear like kind of a muffled voice as you know you assume he's talking to the barkeep, and when he comes out he says uh, seems like what you're saying is true, but I've got to take the little one in with me. Fuck! I'd like to go along with him. Excuse me, are, no. Excuse me, you cannot take this man. Okay, he isn't a very esteemed member of his order and he will be coming back with me to my estate we are very important people in the city do you uh, know who we you, are aren't you a member of like a family from this town <laughs> do you have a family <laughs> <laughs> no but you like kept claiming to be an important family or something well, I'm claiming that we're an important family and he's staying with us. Yeah, yeah, he, that's fair. He's riding off of the Goldie coattails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Garm Jin Empire. Persuasion? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that going to go well? Oh. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's pretty much like how all of his persuasion goes, I think. He's like, sir, uh, it's, it's not personal, but... It's the law. He's got to come with us. We have to. We have to figure out what's going on here. He'll... I strongly protest, and you will be hearing from my family's lawyers. Just so you know, we will have your job. If you take um... this man, we will have your <laughs> job. And he said, he said, he says, "Well, my name's Gas. You can find him down at the steward's quarters." Should I try and like bail? Should I try and fight back? You guys, what do you think? No, as, as a member of the temple, I'll go there and help represent you. I know that <laughs> this is nothing but a huge mistake, and you do not intend to take any lives. I can. Um, I'm time. gonna go call our dad's lawyer. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> yep. That's my plan. When you say call. <laughs> yeah. Send a sternly worded letter via Orphan. 
on the street. Yeah. That's that how boy. this works. <laughs> yeah. Here's a gold piece. Don't steal it. I don't know. I guess not a gold piece. That's a lot of money. I give him like two coppers. <laughs> hey, could take this to my lawyer. <laughs> so this like group of of uh, people, they start to like, you know, a couple of them like surround you, Basil, and they and they start to like usher you away and like back toward the center of town. I'll go quietly because um, let's just say that I reluctantly appear to be trusting Ayumi. Safe I guess... in Ayumi's strong yet slender hands. So are we all gonna go, or what's or what like? I have the um, lady still in my in my. You just don't have to. Do that. Honestly, it might be better if if you don't, because if we're gonna like sweet talk our way out of this, then maybe like the less people talking over each other and like saying shit, the better. Um, but, I leave to go find an orphan to hand a letter to, the and then I'll come back. Are you trying to get a lawyer? Yes, I'm going to write to our lawyer Robert Kardashian. Un, oh, and he is oh, going God. to get this man off. Okay, I have utmost faith in him. If the skeletal glove don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> All right, I will write up a letter to uh, Rob Kardashian, the lawyer, while you guys interrogate the lady. Uh, yeah, so are, you, so are you all going? There's like four guys escorting. So eight of them stay behind okay. Gaz, the captain, and four of them start to take Basil back toward the Wait, end. Are, are there handcuffs in this world? You have been bound, yeah. Can can I just for canon's sake, not to like put up a fight or anything? Can can I just get out of my bindings? It's like kind of Basil's like sweet spot, and it, just for for lore wise, it would be fun. And then we like get to the station after I've been calm the whole time, and they go to undo me, and I'm already undone. Um, sure, go ahead and roll a sleight of hand as you're being escorted down. Ooh, baby. Okay, uh, that's okay. So that would be fifteen. Yeah, as you're as you're like kind of going on the street, um, yeah, you're able to like free one of your hands. They don't know that you've got a, a dislocatable thumb. In your <laughs> Neither did I. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. it's broken. <laughs> What's the, what are the rest of you doing? Um, I still have what's her name in my in my in my arms. Uh, we explained to the captain like our thoughts about their potential involvement or what they said right did you i haven't i gave a very <laughs> all right let's try and have vana try and convey this yeah, yeah, yeah you're still like holding on her and gaz locks out to you so like look hey, look okay so I, I i like shake her and i'm like tell him what you tell me as you as you shake her there's like a, the distinctive sound of coins Clanging against each other. Oh, cool. Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's some credibility. Yeah, and she says, uh, she says, I never I never met that bastard before tonight. I, he told us his name was Bernard. And then he introduced, I don't I don't know really what's happening. He just said that he would create a distraction, we would pick the pockets, and then we'd all split it up. I don't she says, I don't. I, I can't believe that that Shayla's gone, and, and he seems, you know, he sort of, he sort of like nods knowingly, and uh, he says, "You could set her down." Uh, Ivana does that reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? He says, "You know," he asks her name. Uh, her name is Krista. And she uh, says, "All right, well, you know, you're you're also going to to need to come back with us, and and we'll get to the bottom of all of this in the morning." And then four more guards escort her away and follow Basil down the street. She has got guards for days. Um, yeah, I mean, it's you know, pretty. It's getting pretty late here, and things are happening. What do you, what do you guys want to do? What's the I mean, would it make sense that we would go with them? Like, would they that even be like, maybe like hang back, allowed or something? I don't think there's anything we can do for Basil at this point. Basil's just rotting away in a cell right now. <laughs> well, he'll rot away with or without us. Yeah, that's true. 
let me just follow Basil for a second here. You get um, brought not actually too far. It's only you know about you know half a mile or so back to this like massive stone structure in the middle of town. It has like this big uh, courtyard around it, and you know it's not like adorned in any particular way. It's just this big like stone sort of austere structure and uh you get brought into like kind of a side door that leads like directly down and you pass like two guards posted um there and you basically got get brought down into you know a room in the basement that has like several holding cells and as you get down there you see like uh, a couple people asleep in some of the other cells and you're just like brought into uh one of the cells and one of the guards like goes to take your uh so like take your cuffs off. Yeah, he sees, he sees that, that you've slipped your cuffs and he just sort of like makes an intentional eye contact with you. Like, what the fuck is this? P perhaps they weren't put on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheeky one, huh? Well, we don't really like cheeky ones down here. Well, I didn't think about that having consequences. <laughs> yeah. And he... Uh, <laughs> And he, and he sort of like goes and he, and he locks the cell and he comes back with like a, uh, you know, like a bowl of, and, he, and he like dips it into a barrel of water and he brings it over to the cell. Like he's going to give it to you. And as you reach for it, he just like dumps it out on the ground and drops the bowl. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. this? Have I gone down to the basement or have they not allowed me to go down there? Yeah, they, they stopped you at sort of like the entry room at the top of the stairs. Um, there's like two guards in there with like a desk and, um, you know, they sort of sign Basil in as he goes in. They make like a little record of him coming in, and um, yeah, they don't they don't let you go further, and they just tell you that you know if you, if you have anything to say, you can come back in the morning and and speak to the clerks. And there's you know they'll, that they're basically just like the night guard, and they're, yeah, they're like waiting waiting till morning till more like authoritative people are around to decide what's going to happen to Basil. That's all right. I can wait right here, and I just sit there. <laughs> just wait right there. Oh um, yes. Also, for the record, as he's pouring out the water, I like make it turn into like little snowflakes as it falls to the ground. Okay. <laughs> You're not helping your case, man. What? What's wrong with that? I'm trying to cheer him up. <laughs> I'm <to> cheer him <laughs> up. Yeah, Basil, the the jailer does not see him enthused at all that your behavior is like is, okay. is he like a known i mean i presume basil's like a known shady character char like his can't be his first time in a jail no, is new to town right so isn't that like your thing there? like you're you're like a a, a career con man a like, charlatan but i just got to town basil is this your first time in this jail this jail uh i would pr presume it's it's either my first time or at least my first time since this guard has been alive I'm assuming he's a human, like within garden age. And I haven't been here in that long. Guard, he's a guard aged human. Okay, what is the what is the rest of the group gonna do? Gonna oh yeah, I guess if it's and I'm also at eight HP or five. I'm at five HP, so I might just we could go yeah we could just go long rest. I mean, have a nice long rest. Yeah, just and like let go get Basil, Basil in the morning. Oh yeah, could, yeah. could the old Razzle Basil also take a long rest in my cell? You roll a Constitution save, Scott. Oh, uh, you got a two. Yeah, you uh, you actually don't get a long a long rest. You get a <laughs> my Constitution, like my ability to sleep. It is when you're in a cold jail cell and you have no, no comfort and no no quiet. Dang, that's sad. I'm only taking a short rest. Jail well, sad. I'm not sleeping. Okay. Yeah, the jail the jail is like damp and horrible and there's rats and cockroaches and shit. It's like the last place you want to be. All right, I got eight hit points back. Nice. Good, I'm quite nice. low. Yeah, what are you guys doing? You're just gonna go back to Casa Oreum. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I still am planning on sleeping right outside of there. <laughs> I'll invite you inside if you want, but. I mean, I feel like we've all invited her inside, but okay, fair enough. I yeah, I mean, I think she would be less comfortable in a nice ass place than just on the ground outside. Yeah, fair enough. 
Okay. Yeah, the, the three of you uh, can take a long rest. Uh, <laughs> about halfway through the night, you hear there's like a some shuffling and like kind of a, a you guess like a change of the guard is happening, and there's like some chattering and some chuckling, and a guard walks by and just like flicks the back of your ear. Me? Fine. Well, that's just not very nice. No, Ayumi. Oh. He's like, I don't. I don't move at all. Okay. <laughs> Are okay. you like those guards in front of Buckingham Palace? Oh, that people fuck with all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. They, is this like the? Are you actually posing the way that you're that Ayumi is posing right now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you kind of push your ear and you don't respond. He just like gives this grunt and then goes and just like takes his post and sits on a stool for the rest of the night. Um, yeah. And as you're there, like a couple of. A couple of other people are like brought in and brought down to the cells. And Basil, you see that too. Some other people are brought down there. Ah. Cool. Yeah. So in the uh, in the morning, um, Basil, you're woken up by um, somebody bringing you like a uh, plate of just like it's basically just sludge. You know, it's just like disgusting. Some sort of like you know grain. Ish. But vegetation can change the taste of things slightly. Just you know. it's delicious now. It's bacon and eggs. Great. Yeah, it's totally flavorless until you press to digitate, and then it's as good as anything you ever seen. And the, and you just start like digging into it, and the guard is like, just sort of like rolls his eyes that you would be so like eager to to eat it. Yeah, I, I, you mean you, you uh, you're there for another changing of the guard in the morning. <laughs> Now I'm now I'm up, so I'm going to make some tea and offer them some tea because <laughs> I have a thing. Okay, yeah, they they sort of give a little bit of a chuckle, and uh, one of the two of this new guard uh, gladly accepts it and starts to drink it. He seems to enjoy it. Poison them, creamy, <laughs> uh, and yeah, as he's sipping it, yeah, he mentions that. Um, you know, he says, I, I don't know why you've been sit, sitting here all night. You know, just like anybody else, your friend's going to have to uh, go in front of the steward. At some oh, point. Jesus. I, I told my friend that I would be you and stand with him. And that's just what I'm planning on doing. I'm two to my ward. He says, well, you're a good friend and witnesses are allowed. So good on you, I guess. Good on you. I guess. Uh, yeah, so the, the Arayans and Vauna, when you uh, awake, you hear uh, voices down below. And um, when you go down there, your father, Karen, is speaking to Robert Kardashian, of all people. Whoa. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a man down there in like fully like elaborate garb he's like all dressed up to the nine he's got like some frills like coming out of here coming out of his sleeves and stuff and he's got like this uh like really like beautifully made like leather case with him he looks like very um you know official he looks official so he's got a fucking job unlike some of these other mm -hmm. riffraff unlike the rest of us yeah <laughs> um and as you come down he, he says well, I got your letter, obviously. Uh, why am I here exactly? In your own words. This is very important. Okay. As well. Give me very explicit instructions to go bail my friend out of jail. Well, I thought we would all go together. I've never met this friend of yours, and I figure the more witnesses on his side, the better. So we Well, should... what are we waiting for, folk? Let's go. Let's go yeah, save chop, chop. our buddy. Bail me the fuck yeah. out. I'm bored of shit. Basil out of out of prison. He was just trying to help. <laughs> Everyone's best friend, Basil. Does that do this for once? He really wasn't doing anything horribly evil. <laughs> Is it his fault that he's just stronger than he knows? And really, that girl is weaker than because that was a a very weak attack. Yeah, yeah like, that was just a bitch ass bitch. She was know? a bitch. I, yeah. don't, just for the record, don't say that to the steward. <laughs> I was going to say, this is definitely uh, our line of defense. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if it's a crime to kill a bitch, then lock me up. If the girl's a bitch, she must acquit. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay, so yeah, the uh, group gathers back at the steward's keep here. You are greeted out front by Ayumi, who appears to have been up all night. Um, <laughs> To be fair, I, I look pretty okay. I did some meditation. It's not the first time I've done this. Her makeup's all <laughs> fucked. Yeah, you're sort of greeted outside, and um, yeah, as as you guys kind of get back together, you <laughs> meet this, you know, representative that the Oram family has, you know, sent along with these guys, and um, yeah, you go inside. Inside, there's a. Uh, you know, like a greeting area. There's like a lobby with a few desks and you approach a clerk and you tell them what exactly. We're, we're here for the trial of Basil. So he goes through the thing and says, okay, well, it's not really a trial. She says under her breath and she's like looking through. Says, All right, here we go. Uh, we just really, really want to be on Law and Order SVU. <laughs> just like yeah. everyone, <laughs> everyone just yelling, OBJECTION! <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even said anything yet. Uh, <laughs> you're not actually in a courtroom. Strike it from the record. She says, well, the uh, steward will be passing his judgment very soon, so you may proceed uh, into room B, I suppose. <laughs> Room B. Oh wait, we're gonna be seeing the steward himself. Room B. And Kardashian. That's a that is a very fantasy kind of name. That's a good, good good job with the naming. <laughs> Lord Kardashian. <laughs> you know what? It kind of works. Oh, we got a courtroom. Mine's right, room B. So you guys sort of like pile into this. Uh, room with some pews. I do like how you had the courtroom just like ready to go. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's at, he's on the big chair. Nice. Oh, yeah, he's wait, the, judge. the judge's chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the judge uh, now. This is this is taking a tone I did not see. We're the ones on fire. So Vana has <laughs> no idea what's going on. She, like, she, <laughs> this is. Like, <laughs> I, I imagine that one of you would have had to explain it. Okay, so. You guys kind of pile in. Um, yeah, your lawyer, you know, he, he doesn't like go up to, you know, kind of represent uh, Basil, but he's there. And this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yikes. Who is this guy? Ooh. He's a giant. Yeah, he's big judge. <laughs> <laughs> a huge <Yeah>. judge. <laughs> I always forget with the hockey to make it not snap. There it is. Okay. It's me. <laughs> Huge judge. <laughs> I watched that show. Giant. I'll judge. rise for the honorable huge judge. Uh, okay, so there's like a couple of bailiffs standing around. He's, uh, this guy sort of like makes his way out. He's this sort of, you know, gruff guy, piercing blue eyes, very short, militant haircut. He's in like, um, you know, plate mail from the neck down. He's like fully armored. It's very early in the morning, you know, and he's already like, he's just in his full thing. And he, and he already looks to absolutely detest all of you. Oh, fuck. He's just like, I mean, like oh, fair. yeah, he's like, he's like, I see we have a crowd this morning. So We're just very supportive friends. What are you talking about? We'll keep this brief to spare everyone's time. He says, what's your name? I I guess I'm trying to decide if I should be an asshole to this guy or not. (laughs) Do not make this decision. Bastion Smith Jr. (laughs) Oh god. Bastion? He's sort of he's sort of like going through stuff and he like looks up at you and he like looks and he like calls somebody over. Like, he just like gives like kind of a whisper, and the guy goes like disappears into like a back room. Whoa! And he sort of like makes makes a note and says, "Well, you're accused of the murder of one Shayla Noctis last night. What do you have to say?" Not guilty. 
This is what's, what happened. Oh, God. It's so painful to have to just sit here and watch this. Like, I, I, think- I lean over and whisper to uh, Ayumi. Uh, I said, is that Trevik Bokstrom? No, I don't know who this is. Even if you guys haven't, like, ex- Explicitly seen him before, you know by the inference from the death of this. This is the steward of Harlow, Trevic Boxstrom. Dang. Yikes. Yeah, this, this is the steward. Um, also, okay, so can I can I just word for word say what Ayumi said to the cops yesterday? Okay. Yeah. I mean, he seems like a little bit surprised that you're, you know, speaking so like to the point and eloquently, and he says. Mm. I see, I see, I see. says, well, hmm, Gaz tells me that uh, these women were maybe trying to rob the patrons of the candle and cauldron. Is this true? I can't speak to their intent. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see, I see. says, well, hmm. I really have no need for miscreants rotting in my jail cells. Says, do you do you think I should keep you here longer? This town really has a casual. I was gonna say you literally murder. murdered I mean... someone last night. <laughs> He's he sees you guys like sort of with these like incredulous looks on your faces in the in the pews. And he says, oh, I'm I'm completely like just straight faced. I have made no no change of emotion. Yeah, I also don't think that my vo- I don't think I understand uh, well you know, enough. I don't think you understand it well enough to be upset about this. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not upset. I'm just, like, whispering to Virginia, like, really? I would have killed <laughs> Really? I would have killed yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? Why, I knew why, this was going to be. Well, he spots an incredulous look on somebody's face, and he says, he says, rats killing rats in the gutter is no concern of mine. Ooh, yikes. And as he's like wrapping it, you can see he's like got some like letters and he's just sort of like casually like like writing on some paperwork. And as he does, the other guy, the guy that he like sent away, like comes in and uh, he like leans over and, and the, the guard like whispers in his ear. He goes, I see. Ah, that's rich. He says, very, very well. He says, come with me for a moment, halfling. And he gestures <laughs> you to follow him into his office. Yikes. Uh oh. I'm going to sort of lean forward to Basil and be like, if you cat like if you ta- cast telecommunication, we can speak while you're in the office. Oh, I do actually have message. You you could met we could message back and forth while you're that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay, I, I like ready that or whatever. I just want to stay up to date on what's happening. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I I've got that ready. Okay, cool. Um yeah, so he takes you in the office and he sort of like waves the guard away. Uh oh. And he says, I knew your name rang bells. You've come back to Harlow for what exactly, Bastion? Uh adventuring. Adventuring, adventuring. He says, Well, I believe you received a letter from my office, haven't you? I don't recall. Roll <laughs> <laughs> a deception check. I don't know if anybody really means that they don't actually recall. When they say I don't recall. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever said that and meant it. Oh. <laughs> oh, no one has ever forgotten anything. It's like five. Says, no, no, he says, no, no, Bastion. You can no need to try to bullshit me. He says, I've been I've seen it all and heard it all. Says, You've come back to claim your inheritance, haven't you? It seems you already know. So what's the point in asking? He says, oh, I just like the casual conversation, I guess. Well, there's there's something so rich about this, Bastion, about you being here and about your desire to claim this inheritance. He says, you see, your father, did you know him while your father? As well as anyone knows their father. (laughs) He says, I knew my father quite well. So, I assume you knew him quite well, and if you did, you know that he was a cheat, and he owed many people many things. Ooh. Shots fired. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
He says, and I'm afraid, Bastion Smith Jr., that the only inheritance you're owed by this fine city is a debt. One that your father racked up over many years. And I intend for you to pay that debt. Do you think that's fair? I think he'd probably say something along the lines of, you know, uh, if, if he's to be held responsible for the faults of his f- father as well, because he's a kind of a dick. So I bet he has a dick dad. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. Well, he's sort of, he gives you sort of a, uh, you know, like an appreciative chuckle. Very funny. I just I message telepathically to Ayumi. I say, we're in. <laughs> I got him right where I want him. <laughs> All right. He says, well, I'll tell you what, Bastion. Or Basil, which do you prefer? It doesn't matter. I'll be sending somebody along shortly. As far as I see it, you owe me and this fine city a favor or a few. He says, he says otherwise... That will not be the last night that you spend in that cell. Or places far worse. Oh, jeez. Okay. This is a dick move. Like, this dude's... This guy's a dick. kind of co-opt. Yeah, I do wonder what the actual, like, legal ramp... Like, you know, you creditors and such. What, maybe yeah, I was like... A, I was going to ask, like, what is the actual legal situation in Harlow? The legal situation, as far as any of you understand it, is that the buck stops with the steward, that there's no higher law in the city. Than... Here's the thing. Even even if he is responsible to pay his father's debts, you can't be like, you know, you have to pay his debts, but also if you don't agree to it right now, we'll hold you accountable for this other crime. Like, that's what's that's what's bothering me. Yeah, that's like the between... awful good paladin. He, 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 he's blackmailing you. I mean, he's, he's abusing his authority. Yeah, I'm kind of just trying to be like indignant. Yeah, it, yeah. He says, he says, yeah. I guess we are done here, but thanks for coming to me today, Basil. And thanks. You'll be hearing from me very soon. Oh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> I walk out. He doesn't even follow you. He just stays in his office, and uh, the the guard, like, as you go out, the guard, like, sort of makes a move and like looks back into traffic, and, and he just sort of like waves him and. Perfect. I like walk out all like all like proud and and show offy. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, Basil walks out and he's like, yeah, got this like air of I showed that guy what for. Hey Basil, what happened? <laughs> did, what did he have to say? Nothing. After I was done telling him what I had to say, <laughs> and then so basically I'm just like I start heading to the door. I'm like, are we getting out of here or what? This place fucking sucks. I don't want to stay here another minute. I understand. I agree. We should move on. Uh, cool. So, yeah, as you guys are, um, you know, leaving, I mean, some of the guards bristle a little bit that you seem to be just sort of walking free, but, you know, they don't. I picture myself walking like like Floyd Mayweather. You killed uh, a bitch and you got away with it. Oh, nice. yeah, so, so as you walk out on the sort of the courthouse steps, uh, you see, you know, there's some like vendors around, some people like sort of setting up for the day. Um, some of the road folk have set up like a, you know, a small tent here, like a very colorful striped tent. And they're, um, just trying to like, you know, encourage people to like go out of the city walls and, and visit their like full encampment. And then, uh, you also see that this square shares, um, you know, a frontage with, um, the hunter's guild. And in front of that, there is a massive, uh, kind of notice board. There's like a big, like big planks of wood, and the top of the notice board has like these two huge horns that like curl up and around. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys some postings. Oh, <laughs> side quests, baby! Postings. Hell yeah! Oh shit! Yeah, do we want to do like round robin and read them like in class? Yeah, like, I like that one? idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See. <laughs> By the request of Gilda, Gilda, and Gilda, and company, issued on the eighth day of Tarsac by the Hunters Guilds of Harlow on approval from the steward thereof, and to be carried out with expediency by the below signed for the sum of 125 gold pieces. Interested parties shall report 
to the who? Uh, Sam Dusky. <laughs> Beneath Warehouse 12 in Harlow and be prepared for immediate departure. The request is as follows. The mining company above has recently acquired the disused quarry at Black Ridge Pass. Upon arriving at the quarry to resume operations, it was discovered an infestation of kobolds had taken hold in the tunnels. Furthermore, it would appear the kobolds have access to volatile explosive powder. Extreme circumspection and prudence shall be exercised by the contractor. Approved and undersigned, etc., etc. Wait, there's like five words left. You read, 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 read the underside. Torben Gal, lead deputy director of the Harlow Hunters Guild. I'll do pirates on the gum. Five words left. This one is smaller. One. Okay. <clears throat> By request of Zara Azora of the Freewind Company. Issued on the 14th day of Tarsac by the Hunters Guilds of Harlow on approval of the steward thereof and to be carried out with expediency by the below signed for the sum of 75 gold pieces. Interested parties shall report to the Sandusky beneath <laughs> Warehouse 12 in Harlow and be prepared for immediate departure. The request is as follows. One or more groups of pirating river scum sick have been waylaying shipments of grain, particularly those varieties used in the distilling of strong alcohols. The above requester will pay in full for the capture or death of the brigands and half for information leading to their being brought to justice. Approved and undersigned by Porian Gal, Deputy Director of Harlow's Hunters Guild. I'll read the last one. By request of the township of Ormskirk via Courier. Issued on the second day of Tarsoc by the Hunters Guild of Harlow on approval of the steward thereof and to be carried out with expediency by the below signed for the sum of 55 gold pieces. Interested parties shall report to the Zandusky beneath Warehouse 12 <laughs> on Harlow and be prepared for immediate departure. The request is as follows. A courier from Ormskirk reports uh, the town being repeatedly assailed by an unusually organized group of fishmen. The people of Ormskirk request assistance in exterminating them. Further detailing may be available from the courier who has taken up residence at the Candle and Cauldron in Lower Harlow. Approved and undersigned by Porian Gal, Deputy Director of the Harlow Hunters Guild. Yikes. We probably don't want to go back to that bar anytime soon. Yeah. Also, this sounds like a job for genocide. Like, it sounds like they're asking <laughs> us to kill all people of a certain race in an area. Yeah, that's, that's basically accurate. We're like, only Ugh. 55 gold pieces, too. Yeah. I think we should do the expensive one. Yeah. I, I like that one between or... five of us is just two feet gold pieces. I like it the... makes sense as well since they affect the um grain in the city, which I know your family has some stake in. But I'm up by the one. The pirate I one do. also appeals to me because I uh um am interested in interacting with Zara Azora. And also, like, the money, like, yeah, it is nice, but when you split it four ways, it's going to be a really small amount anyway. Mm -hmm. I just want to throw this out there while you guys are talking about this. So you guys got paid very, very well by Donald Carway. He's, like, an extremely wealthy man. And for some mm -hmm. of you, that's, like, more money than you've ever held in your hands at once. That's, like, months and months worth of wages for a normal worker. 20, 20, gold, 20 GP? 20 gold pieces. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, I think, like, a normal... Like living wage is like a half a gold a day. So as you guys are like reading this poster, these, this board out loud to each other, like uh, preschoolers, it's really adorable. I actually like made everyone let me try to like make my English better <laughs> to like read the entire thing. No, oh, that's, that's a hard really one. Long. That's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> then dusky. Sounded out. Then dusky. <laughs> I'm really proud. Then rookie. Then rookie. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so as you guys are kind of like looking at these, um, you get approached by a woman in like full like silks and very colorfully dressed and jeweled, and she she says, "Excuse me, excuse me. Um, you just seem to be the capable types." And I and I see I see that you're looking at this notice board. She says, "You, you do you have just just a moment." You have just a moment? I, I have somebody urgently in need of help. 
I'm so flattered by being called competent. Anything you want. <laughs> she says, oh, <laughs> yes, you too, of course. You, yes, I hate oh, you. you. Know, <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. She says there's a there's a boy in the in our encampment. The uh you'll you'll find you'll find him out in the wagons. There's a there's a boy, he's he's grown quite ill and and we're not really sure how to help him. The What is the payment? Oh uh, <laughs> she's like, look, I'm she's like, I'm really not I'm really not the one to ask for that. I, I just you know, we don't we don't carry much material wealth with us. We just uh I just ask if you if you have a heart to go help that that you might just go you might just go inquire at the camp. Of course, I I want to help. I was gonna say, all right, decent one. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Can I just say thank you, Will, for having a decent character? <laughs> hey, Chatty's is down. Yeah. He likes flattery. He's already on board. I know, but does every NPC have to flatter you to get something done? <laughs> Would you ever just want to help somebody? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Before we go, though, I need to fetch my equipment because I I need my stuff. So, yeah, Ayumi, as you uh, go back to the temple, um, you guys want to all go together? Or do you guys want to split up to go, you know, get your gear and get ready? Basil's ready. Basil kind of travels light, so... <laughs> I don't think I need anything. Well, it, it looks like Ayumi's heading off in the direction of the Temple of Lathander, which is pretty nearby. Should only take Why? me a moment. All my stuff is packed and ready. Yet. Yeah, I need to go grab my shit from our state. I, I carry too I much. I don't have stuff. anything. Wow. It's just, just you in the mall. I have a <laughs> secret bunker sack that I need to go grab. Well, Ayumi, as you, as you uh, approach the temple, you... You see your friend Alar out front, the the kind of keeper of the temple here. Of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, as, as you approach, he says, "Hello, sister. How does the light find you today?" Quite well, thank you. Been some time since you've been at the temple. Have your days been treating you well? They have been difficult, as days can be. But I'm with some people who I believe can use my help as a paladin, some guidance. I'm sure you're right about that. <laughs> I hate the hoy, but I have a pressing matter I must attend to. A oh. child who is sick, who I hope I can help ease their pain and heal. The child in the encampment, the road folk. Yes, yes. You thought of them. Yes. So, yes, it's a, it's a curious thing, that boy. It's like... I tried every magic I know last night. Maybe your god teaches you something mine doesn't, but the light of Lathander was of no use in that place. Do, you can only hope do tread. Try. Do promise me you'll tread lightly, Ayumi. Of course. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, as you go into the temple, um, you see that some younger um, kind of acolytes are training in the back with like um, you know, clubs and dulled swords. And this is something you've seen for a while. Um, Alar seems interested in sort of replenishing his, um, his like unit of paladins. He was very, when you came to him, he was very grateful that you did because recently he had sent um, his like small contingent of paladins of Lathander um, into Venon at the uh, behest of the steward. So he's basically got no sort of, you know, martial power at this, at this juncture. And he's been... Every church needs. Well, <laughs> well, you know, in certain places. <laughs> and uh, so you, you can see that he's been, um, you know, and you've seen this over time. It's no surprise to you that he's been um, trying to train some youths to be... Um, how, how does their training seem to be coming along? Are they still fairly amateurish or... To... Um, they, yeah, they are, they have not, none of them yet have, um, shown much, uh, promise in the, um, kind of art of combining their, like, holy disciplines with their martial ones, like, they are picking up some skills with, you know, clubs and things like that, but, um, these are mostly, you know, healers, and they're well, on their they way, but they're fledglings. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so yeah, you grab your gear and uh, I don't know how you guys are gonna meet back up. You didn't say where you were going, so I uh, know. <laughs> um, we're a secretive group. We just yeah, wandered off. Right. And uh, yeah, Chide is in Virginia. I'm just sticking with Chide, so I hope that's okay. I mean, you want the hard, you want the hard character beat at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, as you guys, uh, you know, get get back to your sort of small estate in Lower Harlow, um, your father is out front doing some gardening, and he he says to you as you approach as well, "How did it go with the keep?" It went fine, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> I love it. I'm just gonna try to keep playing Karen Oreo as just like having the most mundane questions. He just like keeps getting <laughs> shut down. Basically. Hi, honey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's, I'm so glad you're safe. Fuck you. We've yeah. already established <laughs> that our parents are perfectly lovely people. Yeah, they're the honestly very nice. <laughs> for yeah, he, said, up he says, uh, he says, oh, okay, was Mr. Kardashian was he helpful? He didn't do anything. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's kind of a layabout. I I hope we never have to contact him again. Honestly, I do. That that uh that letter you brought me from Cordelia, I, I I've been reading it and it it's it's got me very worried. I, I you haven't been talking to this Olmo character, have you? What did, what who is he? How did you, how did you meet him? We saw him last night. <laughs> We just walked away, Dad. We just said no. I'm trying to say face in front of my dad, not be honest right now. I don't know how you guys handle your parents, but... <laughs> I lie to them all the time to make myself seem oh, more God. impressive <laughs> with who I kill. Uh, he, yeah, I mean, he seems, like, relieved to see you well, but also maybe a little concerned that you were just, like, casually dropping the thing about killing people. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, okay, well. No, they did not kill. Basil killed. Basil. No, we didn't do anything, Dad. It's like, Come Basil, on. But... we're fine. Everything's fine. Says, well, okay. If you, if you say so, kids. I mean, glad to see you safe. Can I make you a sandwich or anything? I just worry about you guys. <laughs> Can I, like, have bologna and mayonnaise with white crust? <laughs> or white bread and then the cuss crud off. Says, oh, sure. Is that a thing you can get? Chad special, of course. Same as you've been eating. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yeah. So okay, yeah, you're you're able to um, you know obviously gather your gear and stuff without without any trouble. You enjoy a delicious Chad special. <laughs> We're heading out. Um, and I have Chad special. Says, oh, sure, sure. He's like, I don't know, really doesn't seem like a Chad special kind of lady, but you know what? I'm glad we have something in common. You guys have anything else for Karen? He doesn't really have anything for you. He just makes you a sandwich and he's like, <laughs> well, what? sad to see you go, kids. Be safe out there. I love your parents so much. Oh, you're embarrassing me in front of Vauna. <laughs> no, Vauna literally says, you are very nice. <laughs> they are no. not. How? <laughs> How? How? <laughs> so I've been asking myself the same question for years now. You know, I guess all kids grow to hate their parents, huh, Vanna? Oh, no. Uh, if that happened, with Goliath shall be killed. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That escalated yeah. quickly. I always suspected you a lot had some things figured out that we didn't. Dad, well, you can't just say you lot. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you She's lot. not offended. Look at her. You're fine. <laughs> We're all fine here. Hey, uh, uh, can we go? Can we get out of here? <laughs> yeah, hey, let's get out of here. Bye, I'm not finished with my sandwich, but I bring it with me. You can eat, yeah. How are you not going to eat? Yeah, yeah, you guys leave, and, and as you're uh, kind of walking down the lane away from the estate, you uh, check your bags and you find that he's slipped like a packed lunch in there, also. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, so good. <laughs> yeah. 
Cool. So where to? So yeah, you all meet up, I guess, somewhere, somewhere in these buildings here. I mean, back where we were accosted by the lady, right? Or yeah, that's why I would assume we'd meet up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll buy the key. Sure. sure. So we meet up there. I'll let you guys know that um, other people from the temple have already tried to um, cure this child of their ailment and failed. So we may be going to put in some something special. Basil, this might be this might be useful for you. I don't know what your type of magic is, but if divine magic doesn't end up working, you can always do what whatever it is that however it is that you wizards or sorcerers or I don't know. <laughs> you peel <laughs> off. The amount of shade that only Basil gets. <laughs> that's bullshit. You that's bullshit. We throw shade yeah, to magic. everyone. Basil, just do your weird hocus pocus. Do a funny little dance or whatever you guys do. I, I was never taught that sort of traditional magic. My, my magic's more for killing kobolds. Or unfortunate women. Yeah, random. <laughs> I see. Well, perhaps that will come in useful as well. If we're going to help these people, let's get it on with. I say let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Let's head head to the camp. Yeah, you guys uh, work your way out of Harlow. There's a wall around the city that's not represented at all on this map, so sorry. Uh, in roughly this area here, um, there are, you know, sort of several rows and a very large ring of these, like, beautifully crafted uh wagons you know these sort of intricately carved and painted and they have um, you know all kinds of ornaments and chimes and things like that these um road folk seem to take a lot of pride in their um you know mode of travel and um as you sort of enter their encampment you see that um while most of the wagons have been detached from the animals that tow them. Um, some still have their animals attached for one reason or another. And uh, you see that they, they're being towed by kind of exotic animals. Like one is being towed by a giant badger and the other is being towed by a tamed owl bear. And, and there's like an enormous weasel, like a horse sized weasel. Another one is is towed by a giant goat, and there's a, an enormous elk to that might be towing another one, as well as a boar and an orox. How big are the carts? Uh, I mean, yeah, like the biggest ones are sort of, you know, double wide, maybe like 10 to 12 feet wide and like 20 feet long. So they're substantial. They're like, you could, you know, they're like a single bedroom apartment. Yeah, and they're like, um, you know, you can tell this is like the full time residence of these people. And, there, and there's quite a few of them like kind of, going in and out and they're sort of from all um you know familiar races or you know there's humans a few dwarves halflings going in and out and uh it's sort of like a hallmark of theirs that they're dressed like very colorfully are these people that we saw like having the uh festival um, they're here for the festival. Uh, they're not the only ones celebrating it. It's celebrated by people in this region and here specifically because um, this Harlow is in closest to proximity to uh, this like Pine Castle Island that you can kind of see on the horizon that has like the, this sort of myth around it that started this festival. So Harlow is sort of like the 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 central location for the festival. People come from like all over, but the, the road folk kind of go wherever they want, but they'll, you know, go wherever they think that commerce will be best or, you know, wherever they think they're gonna prosper at that time. So, uh, yeah, I, you're sort of like going through the camp. Um, I am at, Are you guys gonna like ask around to try to find this kid or what do you wanna do? Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna just look around for a sick kid. I'll say mm -hmm. why we're here. I'm I, like, I, I mean, this is the first time I've seen these people like sort of used to like humans and halflings and stuff, but like this is probably a new alien thing. So I'm just being like quiet and just like keeping an eye on everyone so that no one tries to steal what little stuff I have. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, they definitely sort of take it to the next level. You know, they're they're really. They seem like very jovial and playful with each other. And there's like 
cooking fires going and music and you know there's like hand drums and stuff these people are like in, in you know even though it's like drizzling rain they're out and about and they just seem like generally very upbeat about the whole thing um so yeah ayumi you, you kind of stop a, a passerby um and ask about this child and um this, this uh, woman just tells you that you should speak of Bridger and you'll find him uh, in the in the circle, in the central circle. She just mentions this name. I'm going to yeah. go to the central circle and uh, ask around for him. Yeah, you, you find uh, him pretty easily. He's sat at like this kind of large central fire. They're, they're all sort of sitting on these like um, ad hoc benches around the outside of it. And he's a 40-ish year old man. And, um, you know, his hair is sort of roughly cut. He's dressed in like bright green and he's got uh, like a small blonde child like bouncing on his knee and just sort of like giggling. And he's, uh, yeah, just he's just sort of like mingling uh, with his people there. And he sees you approaching and he sets the child down gently and he just, um, you know, you can tell that you're not, that you know, you're not there to like mingle. He doesn't know why you're here, but he gives you sort of like a questioning look and says, come friend, you're welcome here. Hello. Do you know where we might meet a bridge off? Just... I'm he. No, I Pleasure to meet you. you. So you might know of the whereabouts of a, a young child who is sick. I'm says, here to try to oh, yeah. heal. So yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a concerning thing. The boy's name is Sif. He's under the care of of Nathia right now. She's she's held over there in her in her wagon, and he, and he points toward uh, this wagon that's you know painted. It doesn't look much different from the others. It's got you know things hanging. It's like this bright yellow color, and uh, he just points it like, at the edge of the circle. He says, "Do you do you think you could help where the others couldn't?" I I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to evaluate the situation, see what's happening. How long has he been like this? Ever since we came here. Three days now, I think. To the city? It's yes. The boy's fever is like nothing I've ever seen before. Did anything happen? Was he away from camp when it happened? Did was any persons or creatures or anything that right. happened right before, immediately after he came down with us? Some of the children his age, they're quite excitable and you know, we get to a new place and they venture out on their own. I can't keep an eye on everybody, but I don't know. He spent he, he may have spent the night in the city and come back. It's hard to tell. He's been basically catatonic since he got back. Mm. Well, if you think of anything else that is unusual at all, please come say something. So and I'm gonna head over to the wagon. Okay. Yeah, you, you approach the wagon, and as you get closer, roll a perception check for me. All Do right. Do have, like, a detect magic? No. no. <laughs> no. That would be very useful. As you approach the wagon, you, you sort of have your head down to keep your face out of the rain. Um, but as you sort of, like, look up to check it, you notice that there's... Um, actually, like a little bit of steam rising from the roof of the wagon, like little tendrils of of steam, like right off the shingles of the of the wagon itself. Uh, I'm gonna walk up. Is there a door? Or can I just peer inside? Okay, yeah. There's like a there's a small window, but um, it's quite dark. You can you can see two figures, but um, it's not very well lit inside, and it's also kind of hazy in there. It's like. You hear like a, a voice of, uh, you know, it's kind of like older voice come from inside. Hello, who is, who is it? Hello, I am Yumi, a paladin of the Mato. I've come to see if I can help. Oh, very well, couldn't hurt, I guess. But it's kind of, you hear the door like kind of creaks open, and uh, as it does, this like plume of like heavily scented smoke comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And with it comes this like almost blast of heat. It is like 
yeah, it's like putting your face near a bonfire. I mean, it's like very, very hot inside of the inside of the wagon. Yeah, and and uh, Nathie is this uh, like bent over old woman, and she has like deep, you know, creases in her face, and uh, you know her eyes are very bright, and she's you know obviously still very with it, but she is quite quite old and bent over, and her you know knuckles are arthritic, and she's um, yeah pretty. I mean, you assume she might be even like kind of bound to her wagon, like she doesn't seem very very mobile. So as you enter, um, she has like set out just an absolute mess of like small bottles and little bundles of herbs and um, like stones and crystals and, and hanging from the roof. There are various things like hung down on um, like, you know, little leather strips. There are chimes made of bone and and just all manner of these little like knickknacks and paraphernalia kind of all over every horizontal surface and more of the interior of this wagon and as you go in um as you follow Nadia in um there's a boy laid on like a you know kind of a day bed there and he's maybe in his you know early teens and he is just like drenched through he's covered with a sheet and he's just like completely drenched through it and um yeah he's, he's like pale as a bone with big beads of sweat on his face and he just yeah i mean he doesn't make any movement he kind of he's just like eyes closed appears to be sleeping all right um i'm gonna try to do a a, a medicine check see if i can sure natural disease though i'm guessing if it was probably the other <laughs> people could have handled it and they wouldn't be so hot they literally heated up a tent <laughs> but i will try anyway sure things crossed Ooh. okay um yeah you immediately okay. recognize this is no natural infection did you say the heat was coming off of him or was like they kept, they were in, keeping it hot? Go ahead and roll a, a perception check for me. I mean, I'm not in there. I'm. I, okay. Who's, who's all he, in? Who all, who all went to the wagon? I think just I'll go in. The extreme okay. heat would not be like something that Vano would definitely not be like accustomed at all to heat. Nazel's just completely bored with the situation. And not <laughs> Thaddeus is squeamish from illnesses, so he's going to be supportive outside. Okay. Huh. I come in. I'll, I'll okay. be supportive from inside. Also, I want to see someone die. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. okay. You already uh, watched someone die once tonight. Yeah, you want to watch it again, you bloodthirsty monster? After a moment, you know, with the door open, and it is you know, quite cool. It's still spring and the rain and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you, it doesn't take long before you realize that the boy is the source of the heat. And, you know, he's as, he's as hot as a, you know, wood burning stove, borderline too hot to touch. Yeah. You, you, you realize with your uh, medicine check and, and it doesn't really take long for a quick assessment to realize that he is uh, not sick from anything, anything, uh, uh, any natural disease that, you know, I, I'll ask this. Um, maybe the same thing I asked the other guy that she knows where he may have gone or been or if he has said anything since then or anything strange has happened that could indicate some sort of magical influence on this. She says, well, you know, not really sure. He went into the city and came back with this sickness on him. Nobody was with him. So he, he got this in Harlow. Harlow's a big place. It'll be hard to try to track down exactly where he got it. I can, of course, try my lay on hands to heal disease, but I'm not sure if that will work on something of this strength and this how potent this magic is. I'll probably try it anyways if I can't. Um, sure. I know the course, and I don't see another easy way to go about this. Since we can't investigate the whole city to see if anyone saw a child from these guys. Like, Have you seen a child? Yeah. 
I don't know. <laughs> have you seen a He's child? really hot. Yeah. He's really hot. He's he a child. You saw him. Yeah. I'm looking for a, child, a really hot child. Have you seen them? Oh, oh God. Not, not like that. No, yeah, not worry. like that. <laughs> not like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not having another wedding with the gods, and especially not <laughs> in that way. I'm going to try my lay on hands and see what that does. Use five how, how much of it do you want to use? Um, It says that I use five hit points to heal a disease or poison so i'll use five which is basically everything i got but one you lay your hands on this boy on, this on his forehead child. on this hot hot child. <laughs> you lay your hands on this hot boy and <laughs> you begin to concentrate and you sort of open that inner channel between you and ilmater and this divine place that you go. And as you do, you feel from the boy something push back. It's as if you've placed your hands against a membrane of some kind, and something has placed its hands on the other side Whoa. and shoved you back. And for, and for a moment, the boy opens his eyes and he sort of takes in the room and then he uh goes dark again all right well if if it is the potential of possession i should use my daily divine sense to see if i sense any um celestial fiends or undead in this boy okay yes you you sense the strong presence of a fiend. Well, that certainly will make things difficult. It seems some fiend has taken hold of this child. She says, a fiend? Of what, of what, of what nature? Why, why wouldn't the, the man from the temple, why wouldn't he have known? What can we do? Yeah, it is weird that he didn't know or didn't say anything. I'm going to um, try to roll a religion check to know, like, how how do I how do people go about exorcisms? I've never done one before. I have no. <laughs> you didn't teach me this in Paladin school. I'm pretty sure you just <laughs> yell at them and like shake them until they're not. My goal <laughs> on point for healing this kid. Oh damn, dude, you are rolling out of the park right now. What have my worlds been? 18, 19, 19. Yep. Okay, Virginia, let me get a. Let me get a nature roll with advantage. From me? Yep. Okay. I also might pull Basil in to try to see if he can message the boy. Let's roll twice. Communicate with him. 15. Okay. Ayumi, you, once you kind of realize that you have some concept of what's happening here, it occurs to you that the first step of dealing with something of this nature is to ease the pain of the host. And the divine magic that you were trying to use with lay on hands seemed to maybe even only increase it. And, and you're kind of like putting it together, you know, out loud and Virginia, you realize that in your time in the wild, you've encountered some powerful herbs and mosses and roots that could uh, potentially ease this boy's pain long enough to help somebody pry the fiend out of its host. I do still want to try to get Basil to use message on this kid so we can um, tell him to uh, like communicate with him and see if we can try to get him to, while he's body is eased, like try to break free as well. Basil will reluctantly agree to do that. <laughs> okay. What's the message? I, I feel like we should be messaging him that we're going to um, try and that we're here to help him and that he needs to try to fight this thing while he can being reassuring about this yeah. yeah so so he he repeats that like verbatim but without much emotion okay uh basil give me a constitution saving throw 
Oh shit. Hell yeah. As you as you send this message Ooh. into this boy's mind, you're greeted by like a screeching insanity. It's just scrambled static, like a sound you've never heard before. Comes back to your mind, and you take four hit points of damage. Damn! Damn. Basil like rips off his uh, his headset. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> 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 all right well the message attempt i don't know if that got through at all it certainly seemed to have negative things hopefully the um uh, homeopathic um remedies <laughs> yeah dude we um, gotta go the all natural route vana has is is curious uh, enough that she's like kind of gradually sidled closer to the the door and she uh she yells in to ba- Basil and says, "You use ice." Yeah, maybe you try cool to cool down. It off. Don't be very careful not to kill this child. <laughs> yeah, I say it quietly so the old lady won't hear it because I don't want her to be too worried. I'm like, don't. Has you see Basil like- tried freezing touch on this child? He seems too warm. Let's just cool him down real quick. No, dot that code. Just go with like press the digitation to cool him or something. Okay, I'll press the digitate him. Yeah, I'll thank you. The cubic, I don't want... cubic foot of his body. Uh, yeah, I mean it. It um has an effect for a moment, and you can see like you know his muscles are quite rigid, and you cool him for a moment, and he's able to relax a little bit before becoming rigid and tense again. It doesn't seem to have any lasting effect. Yeah, let's, I think we should get some of those herbs. Some yeah. Of those dank herbs do you have those you have herbs with you or you're gonna have to forge for these. I don't I don't remember exactly what the situation is. But I do uh, think herbs are again. Yeah, I mean with, with your with your role, Virginia, you you sort of think that you don't have anything on your person that's of of a potency strong enough to to do this. Okay, well, I'll go over to the to the like old lady or whatever, uh-huh. and say, "Hey, uh, do you know? Do you have any? I don't know what we're calling this herb. You don't yet know what you're looking for. Oh, I don't. Okay, I just know that there are yeah herbs such as this exist. Okay, never mind them. Yeah, I mean, like you know, there are roots or orbs or something that can ease this child's pain enough to help with this possession thing, but I'm not sure what else we can do. I mean, we could go to the temple, see if they can help, but they they already tried and they seemed pretty um, not helpful. Um, Plus, plus, like, that's shady as fuck that they're... I I don't think they were probably worth our time to go to, even if they, shady or not, they, they didn't seem to be helpful, so... But they might know something. Like, why are they being shady? Yeah, I don't know if that was a time to be testing them on that, though. I feel like this kid's kind of on a clock, you know? Yeah. I, I, I mean, give me a, a religion check. Religion. I mean, this wouldn't even be a check. You would just know that... You would just know that Alar is not a paladin. He's not taking a paladin's it- oath. And he, there, and he therefore does not have access to the same sort of senses that you do in that way. As just, you know, kind of a priest, like a cleric, he lacks the ability to sense danger in the same way as you do. It's true. He's much more of a healer while I'm a little right. bit more. So it's, so it's understandable that he may have missed it. It's true. We could still go to him, see, or maybe we should split up. Maybe, I mean, splitting the party, great idea. But I know that... Um, those who are more familiar with the wild or things, they could ask people out here, like, this old lady clearly has a bunch of orbs. Maybe she knows something. People should go yeah. for these orbs uh, who are capable in that. I should go to the temple and inquire about this. I can't get additional help. It seems like if they do know something, it could speed things up. Yeah. I can't do anything else. <laughs> Heal it, that would be helpful to this child, so I might as well do what I can and try to get more aid 
Um, Threatening people and being violent is our is is what the rest of us are good at. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if you ranging, so she uh, and what um Vauna's um survival checks are like, they'll be able to. Yeah, that's true. I guess it would make it. sense for me to go also if I. Yeah, like I, I know it, I feel like the two of you would be pretty decent at trying to find some sort of orbs. I'm gonna go with Ayumi because I ha have no survival skills whatsoever but i do have high perception if they're like fucking with us or something like that and i did it really well so i'm uh i'm gonna come with you yeah i wanted to ask uh some stuff to the lady i can't remember if we got her name her name is nathia nathia so first of all uh i know that there are curative herbs or roots that could be good for this. Uh, but I yes. don't know if you have any or if you know what they are. I've, I've tried everything that that I have here. And, hmm. she just well, we're sure not it's... trying to necessarily cure it. We want, the first step is gonna be like palliative. You know, I we're gonna try to ease the pain. I see. She says, well, I've tried, I've tried worm's tongue and i've tried which is basil and i've tried she's like looking have around. you tried wizard's basil <laughs> yes I, yes I, I have tried that but that's really Damn more, it. that's more for getting fucked up you know <laughs> <laughs> i was hoping you had some she says i mean there are there are stronger things but i have none here i'm not native to this land but where I come from, many mosses can be made into such things, strong anesthetics and that sort of thing. All right. That's at least a start. You can look for mosses. <laughs> you just go to uh, <laughs> You have mosses around. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Do you have mosses? I have another question. Do you know anything about the the milk of the nefalshni. Oh yes. yeah, good, good, good call. She perks right up. Milk, milk of the nefalshni. Where have you even heard such a thing? Uh, it was nowhere. I heard some friends talking about it, or I overheard some random people. <laughs> I love that. Oh. Not friends. <laughs> I mean, I mean people. I mean, I mean they were. I mean whatever you want to hear. <laughs> That's not a lie to old ladies, dear. Says, okay, fine. Says, I'll give her the note. She says, she "says I don't, I don't know this cattle brass, but if he's looking for the milk of the Nafashni, he's definitely up to no good." She says. You do well not to mention this to many other people. Why not? What is? Can you tell me stuff about the milk? Let me just say that it's well, it's it's something even experienced wizards and alchemists don't treat lightly. It's so vague. All right, <laughs> it's something very powerful and very bad, is what it sounds like. Like her understanding of it is also vague, and she's like, she just knows it by its reputation. I guess is what I'm trying to get across. That she's just, all right, all right. Yeah, it's it's extremely destructive, whatever it is. And she she's sort of like titillated, and she says, she says, you know, rumor has it that it's not just a nickname, the milk of the Nalfashni. Now, isn't that something? I wrote an Nalfashni. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, she says, you've yeah. never, never heard of the Nefashni. She says, what are they teaching you kids these days? I, don't, I skipped most of my classes, honestly. Uh, yeah, she tells you that the Nefashni is um, like a powerful demon. It's like an agent of chaos. Ooh. That you can malcolate. This I feel like these aren't coincidences that we're got a demon possession and a demon milk. Yeah, but she seemed, she seemed to think that the, yeah, the milk of the Nefalshni is like not something that 
one should just like bandy about it in public. It's like highly controlled and like very to those that like know what it means. It's like a very um, okay ta taboo thing to be inquiring about. Well, thank you so much. She says, she says, oh, uh, dear boy, there's just one other thing. She says, do you know that your town Harlow is is home to quite the repository of interesting information and libraries? She says, I, re I may recommend to you the query and quandary. This is a to you, know, Virginia, that um, that in town there's a, there's a place you can go to uh, maybe research local, oh. local flora and fauna. So okay. Homework, Virginia. <laughs> yeah, this sounds an awful lot like homework, but oh well. I like that you audibly sigh when you hear it. I like to think that is like actual uh, in, in game. Yeah, I think hey, I do. I'll read, I'll read your stupid book. <laughs> Fine, mom. I'll read a book. Okay, I'll get off my phone. Reading is lame. <laughs> Fuck books. Am I right? <laughs>